Okay, so we are now recording. Laura is in transit with her children right now, so um, I don't know. She might, I hope she can log in. Um, if she's having trouble, that might be an issue. Hmm. So we'll give it a little bit and see if she makes it. Yeah, and we don't have a quorum yet, so we can't start. I guess that means we can't even take public comment if there's public. We'll Not yet. I mean, well, you can, you can have, uh, and this is, some people disagree, although I have checked and I've been told it's okay. I mean, if it's not, you know, we can, we can have conversation. You can't officially have any votes, but you could just, if it's just the public, you know, um, except it wouldn't be sort of an official record. So I would, if you want to make it official public comment, you might want oh, to wait Laura. a little bit. Moot point. Hi, Laura. Okay. Okay. Glad you're here. Okay. There you go. Oh, there so go. you're good. You have your quorum now. Hi, Laura. Glad you're here. Hi, everybody. All right. Okay. So we only have an hour tonight uh, in which we will have a quorum. Um, so I'm going to start right away. We're going to start with a review and the vote on the minutes from 913. I had one question on them, if I can find them. Do you need me to display them? Has everyone had a chance to see them? Yeah. Um, right. I had one question on them regarding point number eight, uh, staff updates, next effort, heat pump program. At the end of that sentence, there is CCA working on application, then one year DPA review. Does that mean the DPA has, DPU has one year to review them or what? No, that... it, it could take up to a year easily for them. To, it'll maybe take them at least a year to review. That's, and that would, that was being a, a conservative estimate. Lori, you just froze. Hmm. Do you know, Stephanie, there was some efforts um, by, I believe, state legislatures to try to get that DPU review of CCAs to be more on time yeah there's some legislation that's uh been put put forth so um i i just dropped out and missed the entire I, answer to my question we, Which, we were mostly quiet while you were frozen yeah. but i just i just asked that stephanie if she knew anything about efforts to accelerate the dpu review of ccas i understand it's quite a backlog and yes. go ahead stephanie you can finish your there, answer I was just going to say there is some pending legislation, so it's pending at this at the moment. So, it's and important. we did we did um, submit the town did submit uh, a letter of support um, along with numerous other communities. We, we're basically working with our CCA consultant on getting letters of support, and then there's a group of consultants that are basically submitting um, feedback kind of on behalf of their communities. So uh, we did authorize our consultant to do that on the on behalf of the Valley Green Energy CCA. Okay, but what did that one year DPU review refer to? Oh, so that just refers to the length of time that, you know, the min, you know, about approximate length of time it's been taking DPU to approve applications. Unless so, this legislation goes through, which I think would substantially cut that, right? Well, it may not, depending on the timing. So, um, of our okay. submission, and you know, and when that legislation gets approved, and there's still a backlog. Yeah. So, so I would I would say know. just make sure that let's make that. Uh, then we expect DPU DPU review to take about a year. Maybe just wordsmith that a little bit. Yeah, and what number is that? Number eight. It's number eight. Expecting. I'll DPU expected to take about a year to review. Something like that, just so I know what that means, because otherwise I don't know what that means. Okay. I'll I'll revise that. Yeah. As a reminder, there are states where if the deep, the equivalent of the DPU does not review in 45 days or something like that, it you get your CCA period. <laughs> so yeah, I don't nice know that. Yeah. <laughs> nice to have that here. 
All right. That was my only comment. Any other comments? We need to that? assign a minute taker, Lori, before we go too far. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's minute taker today? Um, last time it was Jesse. Don? Sure. Okay. Don will be our minute taker today. A uh, quick question about the minutes. Um, the uh, Zoom now has an AI note taker. Um, are we allowed to use that? No. <laughs> They're not accurate enough. So, no. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a, but everything I say is going to be AI generated for this meeting, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll be able to tell. <laughs> I get enough of that handed in at, at class. My comments um, will be strictly I generated, <laughs> not A. <laughs> All right. So okay. So I'll I'll move to accept the minutes with that minor edit that Lori made on item number eight. Okay, and I guess Lori, do you want to call for second. a second? Uh, anyone want a second? Someone second, please. Okay, Don. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And then a vote, and Laura, you're going to need to have your camera on for the vote. So in no particular order, Roof? Yes. Allison? Yes. Drucker? Sorry. <laughs> um, Upstein, please. Goldner? Yes. And Selman? Aye. So minutes are approved. Okay. All right. Um, next thing on the agenda is probably public comment, right? Yes. So we do have some members of the public today, Ooh, quite a few. Um, are there comments that folks would like to make? I see Lily, Nate, Sarah, Tracy. Raise your hand if you do. Tracy has her hand up. Okay, Tracy, you can go ahead and unmute. Hi, so um, I assume you can hear me. So I'm Tracy mm -hmm. Zafian and I'm the chair of the Transportation Advisory Committee. And I was not able to join when you were talking about the safe routes to school work that we did, but we did have a very successful, um, you know, bike walk roll to school day last week. And it also raised some questions about just the biking and pedestrian infrastructure. There were two letters in the Gazette afterward from parents who participated who were also concerned <laughs> about just the overall safety for bike, biking and pedestrian in our town. Um, and I was contacted a few days ago by Stella D just about the proposal. I think it's on your agenda for tonight about writing a letter of support for the completion of the, uh, the bicycle pedestrian network plan and the bicycle pedestrian network map, which identifies the priority networks um, for biking and walking. And we really appreciate if the ECAC wants to take that step. Um, we've been trying to get the plan. The plan was completed by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission in 2019, but it was never fully adopted by the council. And for, in particular, we've been struggling to get the map completed because they prepared a map and it was missing some key elements. So in the early 2021, the TAC members spent a number of meetings going over the map and up making manual edits. We were on Zoom then about where we wanted to see bike and pedestrian priority networks identified on the map. And those have not yet been incorporated into the GIS. Um, but we do get requests from the planning board and others frequently about where are those networks. And I think that having that map done and the plan adopted and the map adopted would be a huge step. So okay. I appreciate that. Um, and I was also just uh, contacting you and I had mentioned it to Stella too. And I know I had met with Stephanie and with Chris Bressup a few weeks ago, but the Transportation Advisory Committee and myself and Eve Vogel have also been involved with um, providing feedback on the proposed streetlights policy, which was brought forth um, in August, 2022 by counselors, Mandy Henneke and Anna Devlin Gothier. Um, so one of the current, one of the current facets of the latest proposal is to create a street lighting 
task force that would look at which sections of town should have the most lighting and which sections of town should have the least lighting. And really, I mean, our, the original proposal that they brought forward in August 2022 did prepare those maps, but they weren't based on any kind of public feedback. And it was just based on their own evaluation based mainly on underlying zoning districts. So there is a task force proposed. We support that. Um, even I had recommended that a member from ECAC be on the committee um, and the counselors would prefer that that not happen, that maybe you could be one of the parties that we contact for feedback, but we just thought that given your knowledge, you know, in terms of energy and the CARP and so on, that it might make sense for there to be a participant on the committee, an ECAC participant on the committee, if that's something of interest to you. So I just wanted to let you know that um, we'd throw your name out there. Um, and if that's something you support, you, sh you may want to let the counselors and the town council know. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Tracy. That's very interesting. I didn't know anything about the streetlight um, effort. Uh, I think it would be great if someone on this committee could uh, be on that new task force. Sounds like it's a new task force. Um, that's just yeah. Been so it isn't. It's being proposed currently as part of the implementation of the streetlights policy. Um, I believe that the it's proposed to have a member to be set up starting in 2024. Um, with the work probably completed in mid 2026. Ooh, so. seems like such a long timeline for a fairly simple task, doesn't it? Well, I think just part of it is with public outreach and so yeah. on, and that there that you would have a version of the map that was prepared, and then that would go out for comment, and then there'd be a new council in beginning of 2026, so there would be some delay then, and so it's not like it would be active the whole time, but right. The, okay. the, I believe also this the streetlight topic is not without um, conflicting opinions, Lori. If you might Google some of the articles, I, I can imagine. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird here in town to have um, conflicting opinions, but there are. Never <laughs> heard of it before. Yeah, we we have we have plenty. I mean. Echo Hill, and there has been plenty of discussion on and off about this over the years with people on different sides. So I can imagine what the, I, I can imagine. <laughs> Let me leave it at that. Um, but it would still be nice to have ECAC input, I think, on such a panel. It won't be, it, it, it'll, right. Only the H is silent <laughs> in our town. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be an interesting task force. Um, so, Unfortunately, Stella is not here today. So Tracy, we were going to put off the discussion of the um, memo that she provided. There's a in our packet. There's a draft memo on completing the um, uh, uh, biking and walking plan. Um, uh, I, it's so I think we're not going to discuss, and we also only have an hour today because one of us has to leave, and we won't have a quorum. So I think we're going to put that discussion off for next week. I apologize. We probably won't hear anything about it today. No, that sounds fine. Well, thank you for letting me know. Yeah. I hadn't heard that update from Stella. So thanks. Yep. Yeah. Um, and thank you. Anyone else? Okay, if anyone else is interested in making a comment, please digitally raise your hand and I will unmute you. Okay, so that being the case, no one, no one else raising hands, it looks like. Um, let's go on to the next thing on the agenda, which are updates. So we have an update from, um, <clears throat> no, Dwayne's not here and Stella's not here. So, okay, we get to skip the updates. <laughs> um, I can give a little update on the annual report. I did give the synopsis. I'm sorry we didn't get to meet last week to get your input um, on it, but I did give, I sent a, there's a, there is a uh, document in the packet that is the update that I gave to council. I pretty much read it. I improvised a little bit, but mostly just read it. Um, it was pretty well received, I think. We had a couple of questions, uh, one of which I couldn't answer. It was the question I knew there was something I wanted to ask Stephanie about, and I had forgotten to ask her about it. It turns out Stephanie didn't know anything about it either, and that is the climate bank. One of our goals for the town manager was a climate bank which sounds like a wonderful idea to me, but I know nothing about it. 
and was hoping we could have a little bit of a discussion on it. Um, so I think who wrote to me, I did get some feedback from, was it Jesse? Who sent me a feedback on it or was it Laura? Um, Climate Bank, hang on a minute. If, if it was Climate Bank, it was probably Laura. It was, it was uh, yeah, it was probably Laura. I, I actually don't think it was me. Because Massachusetts well, has the climate bank, so I'm not sure why I would suggest Amherst created. Oh, I got it. I got it. I'm sorry. It wasn't. It wasn't you. I'm sorry. It was. Um, okay. Basu. Um, Basu had a note about this. Uh, he said uh, he thought it was you. That's why. That's why we thought it was you, Laura, because Basu said that um, you had brought up information on climate banks. See the attached link for more info. I can't put the link in the in the text, but I can share my screen. So uh, I think I'm gonna do that quickly. I haven't had a chance, I've had a crazy busy week or so, so I haven't had a chance since the meeting to look at this, um, but you should be able to see this um, Massachusetts new green energy bank now, right? Yeah, so, um... Sorry, I've been extremely oversubscribed this fall, so I haven't been able to be as involved as I should be. Um, I would not have been suggesting that we do our own climate bank, so if that's how it came across in the polls, we can certainly reach out and amend that. I think the point being is that Massachusetts has formed a climate bank, and it's actually the first climate bank in the country that's focused on decarbonizing affordable housing. Right. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunity. At, and I, I was able to watch a bit of your of your session, Lori. And um, I think there's a big opportunity for us to, and this came up, right? There's a the historic amount of funding out there. There's the sky's the limit with federal funding support. We just have to get the projects ready and go for it. And this right. is an example of funding support in Massachusetts, specifically for affordable housing decarbonization, which is I know is a, a, a important topic in our town. So um, I think we could, uh, generally my point for a, what I think would be extremely important for a town manager goal is being open to innovative funding mechanisms and models. We can't, we're not gonna solve, we're not gonna do this the same way we've done things in the past. Um, I know that's more difficult now that we don't have Sean, um, but that's that would be my suggestion that we include a goal that's related or suggest a goal that's related to, to that. Yeah, with that in mind, the other question we got was uh, in regards to, um, uh, well, without going into detail, it was basically why aren't we applying for more money? Is how it came across, right? And the answer, of course, is because we don't. And why aren't we specifically getting funding for more people to work in Stephanie's department, which is not a solution because it's always just, you know, time limited money, um, and it's also that we just don't have enough people. So the, the problem, of course, with being open to more funding. Um, and able to go after all these different uh, lumps of money is is just having the, the bandwidth, right? Um, so having more people on board to do that. I so do want to say that's that's you know that is true to a degree, but it's not that simple. Like it's just a matter of right. we just need to have more people. Right. I mean, it's a matter of what the funding is, what it's for, what we're ready for. Um, you know, it's just, it's a bit more complicated than that. It's just not that straightforward. Um, you know, and sometimes it seems like there's a whole pool of money. I know that um, Solar for All came up as this incredible grant funding opportunity. And I think people just sort of saw it. I think it's tied to the IRA. People saw that as an opportunity. And, you know, I get comments like, why aren't we going for Solar for All? Well, it's because it's not for individual communities. It's like a $24 million pot of funding that the state is going to be pursuing. So I think sometimes there's this knee jerk response that we're, we don't go after enough when, right. you know, I think, you know, we're, 
I, I'm going to give an update in a bit so I can sort of tell you about some of the funding we're going to be pursuing um, coming up. But anyway, it's true to a point. All right. So I will probably look at this a little bit more and try to come up with some, maybe maybe Stephanie, we should talk a little bit about how this green bank might or might not work, or whether we want to retract the goal, or whether we want to you know uh, say a little bit more about what what we were expecting, um, how Amherst might leverage this green bank, right? The availability of this green bank. Maybe it's just a matter of outreach. I'm not. I have no idea because I haven't looked at this at all yet. If it's just a matter of outreach, we can we can do that as ECAC, right? Mm -hmm. So, oh, Laura, you're you're breaking up. Uh, can't hear you. Uh oh. It's is it me or is it Laura? Can everyone else hear Laura? It's Laura. We can't hear her. Hmm. Uh oh, all right. Well, hopefully Laura will will come back. Um, any other comments or discussion about this, or should I just, um, Stephanie? Maybe you and I should talk about it next time we meet. Yeah, we can talk about it, and um, and I think we just need to have some follow up because it was a an inquiry from the yes. town council what this was about. So right. even if it's literally just a response as to what this is, and right. to Laura's comments, we might want to run it by Laura um, to take a look. And what our responses? I'm okay. just looking at the, that WBUR article explaining the Green Bank. Is it, this is a new thing in Massachusetts? Is that is that right? Apparently, I think so. Okay, so it's recently just kind of getting started. It looks like this is Jan, June 26, 2023. Recently established Green Bank. Right. Okay. Let's see. Where does this go? Oh, it says WBUR. <laughs> so June 13th, it was announced. It says the state is seeding or starting the bank with 50 million from the Department of Environmental Protection, and will put it in a good position to apply for millions more from the federal government. <coughs> yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I guess, yeah, so, nice, um, nice to know more about oh, this. There's Laura. Hey. Yeah, so so sorry, I'm in Hadley and I'm... Oh. Uh oh. Yeah. It's still here. We, we lost you again. Oops. Oh, well. All right. So we'll come back. If Laura, if you have any other comments, we'll take them when you get connect connected. Um, but meanwhile, any other comments on Green Bank or should we move on? Let's move on. Okay. So uh, the grant for community networks geothermal is also Laura. Um, do we have you back? Okay, we'll come back to that. As soon as you're available, Laura, um, hopefully uh, we'll be able to come back to that. Okay, a quick discussion of recruitment. Um, so where are we, Stephanie, with getting new members and when is this? I know we're short staffed, you know, there's, but I really don't want us to be facing having to cancel meetings because we don't have a quorum. Um, as we almost yeah, well, say. Right. Um, yeah, it's been, I mean, it has happened even when we've had nine members, but it doesn't happen often. And I, we've been pretty fortunate to have at least five members, um, consistently. So, but, um, where we are at this point is that we're down two people. Um, I believe I have an email from the town manager's office and I'm sorry, I just haven't seen it yet. So, um, I will check on that, but I can follow up with you, Lori, at the next, at our next meeting in terms of where we are with, um, potential candidates. But what I would say um, is that, you know, if you know people who are interested, they should certainly uh, contact the town manager's office and let them know of their interest. And they can go online and complete a, um, I think it's a citizen action form. Okay, cool. All right. Um, Lori, do you want to stop sharing this article? Or are you oh, waiting? I'm, I'm sorry. Laura? My apologies. I totally it's forgot. Okay. Shared. Stop share. There we go. <laughs> uh, so next Hi, thing. I'm this is Laura. Oh, sorry. Good. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Sorry. I was in North Hadley where apparently there's no internet. Um, 
yeah, just just to close out the green big thing, happy to happy to work with you both um, or review whatever. Um, yeah, Steve. So the that's kind of one of the rules of some of the IRA funding is that states have to set up green banks. Um, like a couple of states already have them. Um, I think Massachusetts was one of the first ones to set up a new one as a result of the IRA. And it, as I said, it's the only one that we're aware of that's focused within the housing department. So it's got this housing focus, which um, is great. And and yeah, I, I hear you, Stephanie. I think it's it, it it's a combo of, of of a few different things, right? Being being ready to take on these grants. I mean, and knowing they're not all grants, right? Some of them are just direct pay tax credits. Like for example, the library project now should be eligible for a lot of these direct pay tax credits. Um, and like just who within the town, like having a laid out process, I think of who is is dealing with this within the town is gonna be really important important moving forward to make sure we're not leaving any money on the table. Um, and I feel like that's something that could be a clear um, goal for the town manager. So sorry to bring it back to that, um, but I'll stop there. Okay. And I will say on the agenda, well, sorry, go ahead, Stephanie. I was just gonna follow up with, and as you noted earlier, Laura, unfortunately we are um, at an incredible disadvantage and it's really horrible timing for us having lost Sean because we have two other folks who are already doing their own jobs that are now basically taking on his duties. And I don't know, I haven't heard what the plan is for getting a new um, finance director, but um, it is a position that we've certainly had. So I don't think it's not that it's going away. It's just that um, finding someone doesn't often happen quickly. And until then, these other folks are totally overburdened um, cause they're already busy. So it's just one of those really, this is just a challenging time right now. We're down some key positions and it's just, um, yeah, I mean, I, I hear you and I totally a hundred percent agree with you. And I wish we had Sean because he would have been totally on top of this, but it's a good goal for sure. All right, so Laura, the next um, thing on the agenda was also had your name on it, the grant uh, updates on that grant for community network geothermal. Do you wanna talk about that? Yeah, I don't have too much to say other than I just wanted to, to flag it. Um, <laughs> after what you just said, Stephanie, I feel bad even raising this, but there's <laughs> um, basically a grant available for um, doing a study on the feasibility of network geothermal in different communities in Massachusetts. I think if we wanted to submit for the grant, we would need to do it by mid-November, if, if I'm remembering off the top of my head. Um, happy to talk to you offline, Stephanie, and, and see if this is something we want to we wanna pursue and I can help maybe draft it or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I, I we would need to look into what the what the rules would be um, because I think we would probably want to have a bit of matching funding whether it comes from our sustainability funding or some other type of funding source to make it a more robust study. But the idea here being is that there's two pilot tests already happening in Eastern Mass, one from National Grid and one from Eversource. And the benefit of networked geothermal systems is that we could use it to help improve the just transition away from gas um, because it would support um, all members of a community within the area instead of just supporting the members of the community that have the credit scores or the other means to um, switch themselves off of gas and onto heat pumps, which then just leaves the gas infrastructure to be burnt, you know, to be covered by those who have not not had that opportunity. So I think it's a really interesting thing that we should try to explore. Again, this would just be to do a study, so it wouldn't necessarily result in us being a good candidate for this. But with some of our school buildings, particularly the middle school and the high school, and maybe some of the neighborhoods around there, or maybe some of our neighborhoods around um, some of the apartment complexes in town, mm -hmm. there may be some opportunities. So. <laughs> Yeah I, would think I some of the older like yeah, I would think some of the older apartment complexes would be the place to start. Lots of dense housing, 
low cost housing and in very much in need of repair. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thanks, Laura. Any other well, comments I, on that? Thoughts? I like the sound of that. And if there's something I can do to help with that, I guess I'd be willing to do so. Yeah, same here. So I guess if Laura can send info to Stephanie and Stephanie could send it around information about the grant that you were describing, Laura, that would be, that would be helpful. Yeah, I can do that. I think there was a link sent at some point, but it was a while ago now. So it okay. doesn't, doesn't hurt to send it again. Okay. If there's no further discussion of that. Next on the topic is on this, on the agenda is staff updates. So Stephanie. Sure. Um, so I guess I'll start with something that was kind of fun. Um, I had been invited to speak to Steve's class. That was wonderful. Um, a group of his students came to town hall and we had a discussion about sustainability and some of our efforts and all the great work you all are doing and the things that are happening. And they asked some really great questions. It was really nice. Um, and then the following week, I had uh, a session with some high school students from an engineering class. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things that they're looking to do is um, it, it was kind of interesting because it was different spin. They were really looking for something like very specific from me about something they could do that would help. And they were talking about one of the things that they wanted to do was maybe design um, window inserts for windows at the high school. And so they asked if that would help. And I said, well, certainly that's something that would benefit. I said, although you know, the high school is regional and in terms of our greenhouse gas emissions, it doesn't really um, specifically align with our green communities goals because it's not included in our um, inventory. However, I did mention that one of the biggest nuts for us to crack is sort of how we address working in the community and working with the community at large. And that used to be um, I think it was really, I think it was sponsored by MassSafe, but there used to be these WinCert classes years ago that residents could sign up and you would get the materials to learn how to make a WinCert for your home. So I talked to them about that and said, you know, that might be a great opportunity if you all figured a way to do this for the high school, then maybe held a workshop in the community teaching people how to do it. Um, and they really liked that idea. Um, or at least their instructor certainly like their that idea. That was John Fable, by the way. Um, so um, who's um, so anyway, so John liked that idea. I think the students were seemingly interested <laughs> in that possibility. But I said that, you know, if they did something like that, you would be a wonderful group to sort of help them advocate for holding these workshops and getting the word out and that, you know, I, I thought it would be a nice partnership for you all too, that you would appreciate that. So it was just an idea. I don't know if it'll go anywhere, but it was sort of put out there. So um, so there's that. Uh, then another update I wanted to give you all is that, um, so I am working very closely with the facilities director. And as I've mentioned before, we're really looking to, to find the pathway to decarbonize town hall. And so we already had a group of Duane's students, uh, well, actually, I'm sorry, Ben Wiles students come in, but it was sort of through Duane's uh, Clean Energy Extension Program. And a group of students came in and sort of did an assessment of Town Hall, and they came up with some, you know, potential pathways of us to get ourselves off fossil fuels. They included weatherization. It was a whole host of things. Um, so we were looking to get green communities funding for a building decarbonization project, which, which is like a, it's a much larger grant than you typically get from green communities. It's a $500,000 grant. It's for two years. Um, while you have that grant, you can't apply for any additional green communities funding, but ostensibly this is a really, you know, this is, would be a very big project. Um, so we talked to Ben about the project that the students proposed, we sort of narrowed in on what our pathway might be. We then followed up with the Green Communities Program, our Western Regional Coordinator, who is Chris Mason, who most of you know used to be um, my colleague 
in counterpart in Northampton and the city of Northampton. Um, but Chris is now the Western Regional Coordinator for Green Communities. And we talked to him and we wouldn't have enough information provided by the um, report that Ben and his students are doing. We need more specific engineering. We need like an engineered plan to sort of move that forward. So <laughs> what we're gonna do instead is apply for a meta grant. Uh, that grant is due mid November. Um, so I'm going to be um, submitting a, a technical assistance grant funding to sort of get us an engineer to develop plans so that we could then apply, hopefully, in the spring round for green communities for this building decarbonization grant. So, um, and this would specifically be for Town Hall. I'm really, um, I don't know, I, I think for many reasons, we really feel like this is an important building to decarbonize and have this be our first um project. So part of that is also weatherization. We have some funding um, that we got through the EECBG funding. It's a federal funding, which I'm sorry, I'm totally blanking on what that stands for. Um, it's an energy efficiency building something uh, funding from the federal government. But um, some communities have to apply for it. We actually have a voucher that we actually have um, some funding that we're going to just be given, I think it's $70,000. So we're going to use that towards the weatherization effort uh, for town hall. So we're going to, we just, I I told Jeremiah that personally, I feel very anxious to just, we just want to get it started. I think he feels the same. So we just want to start and weatherization is certainly a really um, good effort to start with. So anyway, those are just some of the things that we're working on, but um, there's a, a lot of other things some smaller projects and big projects that are all sort of happening in the background too, but that's where my focus is at the moment. So I just wanted to share that with you all. Stephanie, if you need any support on the town hall stuff, I've done overseen a lot of these studies and of similar building types. Um, we've done completed many. So if that's something, if, if, it, if it's useful to you to uh, have someone put eyes on any of that, work or language of what you're asking for or what the deliverables might be etc cetera, etc cetera. i'd be happy to do that that would be great jesse thank you because in the past both Lori and duane have helped with rfps that i've sort of drafted developed and then given them to sort of edit and take a look at and refine further so if i could do that same process with you that would be fantastic That's great. Um, other updates or any co comments or questions? Steve, did you have something? Yeah, I was going to ask Stephanie if she was um, able to give an update on the solar bylaw working group progress. Oh, right. I wasn't going to because um, Duane usually does it, but he's not here. Laura has her hand up, and I don't know if it's in relation to what we just talked about or so. Laura, um, you want to ask? Yeah. Thanks, Stephanie. That's really exciting about the town hall. I not about the solar bylaw working group necessarily, but I had I was wondering if there was any movement that's been made on the proposed ARPA funding for the solar canopy at the high school. Yeah. Um, the only I have not heard, so I don't know that that made it into the town manager's um, recommendations for funding. What I've heard so far is it sounds like um street infrastructure street um for support for um improving streets and then i'm sorry i'm totally blanking on what the second one was there were two i sort of heard two goals and i just don't have it right in front of me i'm sorry um but the canopy was not included in which i have sort of asked but i don't think they're including the the canopy bad. i've advocated for it um, I think ARPA funding would be something that ECAC would have a big say in, right? Well, it's not, no, well, because it's not, I mean, it's related to COVID response. So not specifically, right. you know, it's not, oh, that's, that's right. kind of where it came from. getting my acronyms mixed up. You're, you might be thinking IRA. Up. I'm thinking IRA. You're right. I'm sorry. Yes. They love to throw out those acronyms. Oops. It's confusing. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, so that's that. Um so and then I'm sorry, I was group. solar bylaw working group. Yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> so they um, were, we held a meeting 
yesterday, which was um, supposed to be the last meeting, but some information on battery storage came in kind of last minute and um, they had gotten through half of the bylaw and had half, another half to review yesterday. And with that, they were discussing some of the more controversial topics around um, forest clearing mitigation. Um, so I, they are gonna have one last meeting. It's, I, I've sent out a doodle poll. I don't have a date yet, but I would certainly share that with you all. Um, but they did remove a whole section. They voted, they had a vote actually, they held a vote and removed a section on forest mitigation requirement for clearing for solar. So um, so the update is that they have one more meeting. They still have to discuss battery storage. And I think they have a section on farm land that they're gonna be discussing as well. Okay, uh, Steve, go ahead. Stephanie, do you know what how they're gonna work out the, the nexus statements? There's several sort of nexus statements that are kind of in a draft format. And I was just curious how it's expected those might be developed. I think they're going to be just looking at, um, you know, typically what has been happening all along is suggestions are made. And then Chris Brestrup, the planning director, has been um, taking what she thinks is sort of reasonable and uh, relevant and then creating that language um, for the bylaw. And so members have been reviewing it. I think the idea about keeping the nexus statement to the end is because it should reflect what's actually in the bylaw and because they're still working out what will or will not be included. So that may come together actually more readily and easily than um, seems with uh, these several different suggested <laughs> statements. So, and Chris has been good at pulling things together and what she tries to, and she does try and does an excellent job at really taking people's suggestions and including them. So sometimes it's repetitive. Sometimes people are saying the same thing. So it seems like a lot, but once you sort of boil it down, um, there's a lot of repetition. Thank you. And so there'll be one more version, draft version of the solar bylaw posted on the, the resources for that, for that group before yeah, the so next meeting there we... yes it'll take another week or so before that's up yeah. so uh, we okay. don't next week there were no dates proposed for next week it's either oh. the following week or the week after that so oh, yeah, I, I will certainly yeah. let you know but she also needs time to incorporate some of the suggested edits i would encourage members of the ecac to take a look at that draft document um and if you have any comments now is certainly the time to provide them before it gets before the draft gets finalized as the draft from the solar bylaw working group can we circulate a link i can send it to you all um after this meeting it'll when it's available it'll be on the well, the, the resource I, folder of the solar bylaw working group which has its page yeah i can send the last one that was sent which had been updated um just to sort of cuz there it's a lot so you might want to just go through even this version um, because by the time the other one comes out, it might be too late. So, um, even members have been sort of a little bit behind in sort of which version they're commenting on. I'll send you the latest. How's that? Thank you. That'd be great. Okay. So where are we in the, So anything else, Stephanie, or should we move on to ECAC member updates? Uh, no, I think that's it for me. Okay, ECAC member updates. Anyone have updates? I have one thing I wanted to mention uh, that I think Stephanie already knows about. I don't think I mentioned it here. So uh, heat, um, what's it called? Heat Smart Alliance, I think it is, is doing a free um, electrification coach training, what we were calling a heat pump coach training. It may not be as rigorous as some of the other ones that are out there, but I have been taking it and I've been finding it quite interesting and useful. 
it's being run by Mike Simons, who's the guy at uh, Dope, uh, Bode Green Energy, who Bode Energy, who uh, gives the really nice heat pump seminar, and a few other people who are experts, who are technical experts. Um, and it's good so far. So if anybody else is interested in that or wants access to the recordings, let me know and I will send you a, um, I'll send you a link of, I'll, I'll, what I'll really do is send you an email address to contact because uh, it's a little hard to find the link to sign up for the training, but it's pretty easy to get a hold of the person who is running it and she seems happy to share the materials. Laura, if you want to send it to me, I can, or actually I have it, but um, if yeah, you want her, to just make sure, um, address, yeah. yeah, send that to me and I'll, I can send things out at once. Okay. Solar bylaw and that. Will do. I'm going to make a note. All right. Um, don't think I have anything else. I feel like I'm forgetting something important. Any other updates? Laura has her hand up. Uh, go ahead, Laura. Laura? Sorry. It keeps, uh, yeah, it keeps trying to like make me, <laughs> I don't know what it's doing. Anyway. Um, just on the, the point, Stephanie, about the solar, the ARPA funding and just everything, like I'm just wondering, cause that's another example where, and fine, like maybe it wasn't a top priority, but that was an opportunity for us to like achieve real, like significant operational savings at the high school. Cause we would have used, I'll be right there. We would have used ARPA funding to support the project. Then we could have, the direct pay for the IRA has no limitations on it in terms of bundling it with other grants. So we could have used that to get money back and then to, to use less money, yet less of the ARPA money. And then we could have owned the system and have had all that operational savings um, from electricity, not having to pay for electricity. So like, I just feel like we need somebody to be in this role can we like hire a consultant like what could we do to like it just feels like we don't have the time to wait for another financial director um for all these decisions so i know i mean i you know well, i know there's nothing you can personally do about it but it's just making me feel yeah. like i will say part of situation. it is I, I don't disagree. And I certainly was advocating for it. And it was something that when I talked to Sean, you know, we had both talked about like, you know, he'd asked me and I said, you know, yeah, this would be a great one to start with. Um, I think the problem is that when this was put out to the public, there was not a lot of public support. Everyone was complaining about the streets, you know? So I feel like it needs, you know, I think you all need to, um, and I, I think I feel like you did send a letter. Did I recall sending yeah. a letter about yes. it? Um, I just think it just doesn't have the broader support from the community. And that's, you know, what happens. You know, you need more voices. You need more people to understand. So, you know, again, I don't, I don't know what to say. I mean, I hear you, Laura, and I totally agree. I think it's partly the education of the broader community, too, to understand some of these things as well so that they would maybe see the value um, and understand it more and understand the opportunity. I, I feel like that's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, that all makes sense. It's just a shame because ARPA funding is going to be a drop in the bucket for our street problem. <laughs> Like we need significant right. long-term planning and strategy around that, that is not going to be solved by a short-term chunk of money. Um, yeah, I agree. But and, anyway. And this could have freed up funding is. to be used in the long-term for, for street repairs. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you and I agree. And I know that, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't know what to say. Cause I, you know, I, yeah. I feel similarly. I just, you know, I, when I hear that, you know, the, the, you know, the residents did not 
support it, you know, that there was overwhelmingly not, like there was very little support. I wonder what you need to do to get people to notice what's going on. Yeah. Again, I think it's the kind of thing where it's just people see it as like this incredibly expensive thing. And again, like Laura said, but there's all this other funding that's down the pike that's coming that could support it. And, mm. you know, and I, I just, I mean, even for me, I say, you know, I say what I say, but I think, you know, Sean was a champion and it it's really unfortunate timing right now to not have him in that role. And I don't know about bringing in a consultant. Like I, that's not my decision. And I, you know, I can, you know, I think maybe expressing the opportunity again in the letter in a letter would be helpful. Uh. So excuse me one second. I'm just going to go off. Camera. All right. So I think we should look for the next opportunity to encourage the town to do the right thing. Um, all right, the next thing um, on the agenda is items for the next agenda. When Stephanie comes back, um, we can get her input. But um, so far, we have the things we didn't get to today, um, particularly uh, Stella's, oh yeah, Stella's uh, letter memo. Uh, we'll definitely talk about that next week. Um, anything else for the agenda that we haven't? Well, it was. Yep, go ahead, Steve. There was a, um, I guess, encouragement by some outside people for us to take a look at the recent Massachusetts Audubon um, report on solar. And I've, I've invested some time reading that. <clears throat> I don't know if that's something we'd want to discuss. It largely focuses on sort of state level policy. Yeah, why don't you, if you, if you want to give us a, well, it's a little late now, but if you, if you want to give us a two minute report now, we can put it on the agenda for next time though. Sure, I guess the, the teaser <laughs> report and, um, I feel mixed about it. I think the at the end, the policy recommendations they make, I think are great. And those recommendations are all about changing up incentives to help make solar on developed uh, buildings and parking lots less expensive in order that we then uh, in the state develop less of the best farmland. So that I think that's a great approach. Let's see if we can change the incentives to encourage more solar on rooftops and more on parking lot canopies and less on right. uh, the best farmland and so um, um, best forests and farmlands. Um, that said, I think there's was sort of unnecessarily hostile against solar um, in many of their headlines. And, and it almost seems like there was somebody who wrote the, the headlines in the big bold print that was different than what the text read. There was inconsistencies in there. They, they spoke several, many times of sort of how clearing forests for solar results in huge uh, emissions of carbon, huge carbon emissions, which is true when you're just counting the loss from the forest, but they never talked about the, the avoided emissions from the solar that was put on those sites. The so reality were, is of course pretty complicated. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, so they did not really acknowledge the, the 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 carbon benefits of solar in those analyses. Right. And then the other thing that struck me is they, they said that um, solar development is one of the major sources of, of land forest land conversion, and they referenced their 2020 losing ground report, the Mass Audubon's report from 2020. And you look at that, and it says of solar is as much as 25 percent of forest conversion. So forest conversion, and and there is 25 percent or less. And we heard from um, Dr. Rogan, John Rogan, I think, from Clark University a couple of weeks ago at the solar forums that. Um, Wayne has helped organize that solar development is really only 10 to 15 percent of land conversions. Um, so my big question is for Audubon and others, it's like, OK, well, if solar is such a small one, why are you picking on it so much? And yeah. what kind of policies might we do that integrate those other forces causing deforestation and loss of farmland, which are housing developments and roads and commercial developments? Let's bring those into the mix and see right. if we could collectively sort of 
help direct housing to those um, less valuable lands and, and, yeah. and also meet the housing crisis that we have in the state. So those are, right. those are my thoughts. All right. So that's, that's, that's interesting. Really Let, let's save a discussion for next time though. It does sound yeah. like it might be worth putting on the agenda to talk about. Um, Jesse, I know has to go now. So if there are, uh, I think the next thing on the agenda is, is it where we back to uh, public comment? Mm -hmm. um, in that case, uh, why don't we just go right to that and then adjourn? And if there are any other meeting agenda items, just send them to Stephanie or me. Okay. All right. So are there any public comments? Please raise your hand and I'll allow you to speak. Lily or Sarah. It does not look like we have pub public comment, so. So if not, then I think we can adjourn till two weeks from today. Correct. And remember to reach out to people to ask them to serve on ECAC and to fill out the citizen, whatever it's called, form. Activity form. Activity form. Or action form. Action form, right. Okay. All right. See you all in Thanks, two weeks. everybody. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Stephanie. Yep. Thank you. Bye.